Well, hello there. I'm Lisa Chrysler. We are good friends by now. It's season seven of Community Storytelling, and thank you so much for being with us. And Linda Lester, Lester Square, our anonymous donor this year, Glenn Nakawaza, these pictures that you gave to our set are so beautiful. Look at these colors. Look at the scenes. Aren't they amazing? So thank you so much, Glenn, for that. And look at this amazing woman I'm sitting with. I would say, let me introduce you, but I don't think there's anybody in Los Gatos who does not know this woman. Lucy Wiedemeyer, you yeah, are so our funny. town treasure. <laughs> Have you ever been told that? Because you are. I've been told a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing that nice, right? No, I'm not sure. <laughs> Not sure. Thank you, though. I <laughs> have been trying to get you here for seven seasons, so I'm so honored and thank you so much for sitting down you with me. You did not give up, young I lady. did not, did not give, give up. up. <laughs> here you are. I don't even know where to begin with you, but we're going to begin at the beginning. <laughs> there we go. I mean, there's so much I want to talk about because you have done so much to keep your husband's legacy going to keep his name alive in Los Gatos, and you have made a new life for yourself as well, with him in your back pocket. But you have you have made something without Charlie Wiedemeyer, which is not easy to do. But you are so right. You, you are so right. You know, um, I remember the few times I got to be with him, and it was a moment. Mm -hmm. Every time was a mm -hmm. moment. Mm -hmm. Every time was special. And going back to you, I mean, you met him in Hawaii. You grew up in Hawaii. Why were you in Hawaii? You do not look Hawaiian. <laughs> there are some of us over there that do not look Hawaiian, but we can speak it. Okay. Yes, we're local girls. You I know, get it. Can, can get it. But, but uh, your parents were there for why? Uh, my dad was with the airlines. Of course. Yes. It's either airlines or the military. Right, right. I'll, you're exactly right. There you yeah. have it. And you met Charlie in high school, mm -hmm. who was an authentic Hawaiian, yes. a real life Hawaiian. <laughs> you, go to, you go to Michigan State. You're in love already. But you both did you both go to college there? Yes. And how did you both Got get in there? How did you both get oh, in? Oh, um, football scholarship. But but that didn't help you. Oh yes, it did. <laughs> <laughs> okay, say no more. You know, and it's interesting. The family, um, the coach there, and his wife, and all the other coaches were so much like in high school, where the coaches we were all family. I mean, I knew them all. They knew me. They'd have us over for dinner. It was very much family. I think that's what attracted us to Michigan State. I think it's still like that at Michigan State. Yeah, it is. I it is. <laughs> they so, still stay in touch. Yeah. Yes. If you, you're yeah. at Michigan State. You graduate. You get married. Did you come to Los Gatos right after that? No. We came to California. Charlie got his master's and was a community school director. Had a secretary, did this. I uh, helped teach classes. And he lasted about a year. And he's because he can wear a suit, you know, looking good. That secretary. I can't picture, but okay. Well, it was hilarious because he's like, I really miss the kids, the kids you know, because it was adult program. Contact. And yeah. uh, so he um, applied for Los Gatos and was hired immediately. And what and kind of a teacher was he besides he, uh, coaching? He did history. He coached basketball. Okay. He math. He was a math teacher. Math. Oh, yeah. Okay. But the funniest thing was it took us about a year till we stopped comparing the salaries, you know, as a teacher, <laughs> like down here, as a coach, it was, you know, I think you paid to coach. Yeah, but, I think you did. Yes, but this community, Lisa, I mean, what a gold mine. What a, what a fabulous decision um, to, to come here. And we also uh, noticed the community support. You know, there were grandparents in the football stadiums, you know, there was families that even after the kids graduated were still a part of the high school. I didn't even have any kids there, and I live nearby, and I even go to the football game. Exactly. Campus. How can you, you not? Do. That's what right. you do on a Friday night. <laughs> go to the snack yes. shop, get your burger, Friday watch night the life. game. Mm -hmm. I get it. Yep. So, when did you have kids? You had two kids. You mm -hmm. have two great mm -hmm. kids, 11 grandchildren, which we'll talk about in a minute. <laughs> but I'm trying to place, because I know Charlie got ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease, at the young age of 30. I was 29, actually. 20, which is yeah. not supposed no. to happen. No. And you already had two kids by yes. then? And it's interesting because the team doctor, Dr. Griffin, had really been bugging Charlie to be the head coach. He wanted him to be the head coach. And Charlie's like, I'm great doing offense. It's okay. I'm, I'm good. You know, he, interesting, he's such a humble guy. Never wanted to be in the limelight. And if you segue forward to, to ALS, um, it's it was tragic, but also a bit of a comedy when you think about it, you know, and how he maintained that um, and didn't give up. But back in those days, they didn't have enough football players um, 
to have an offense and a defense. Really? All the kids had to play both ways. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And and it was you know it wasn't the powerhouse that it is today. And so it was always a challenge. Well, it wasn't, but he then made it the powerhouse because he was yeah. such a successful it was, coach. It, it was fun. So at 30, he started showing symptoms, got the diagnosis. When did it really hit him? When did he have to get into that wheelchair? And when did he lose his speaking ability? All those things, Lisa, were really tough because growing up in Hawaii, he was a baby of nine, you know, and wow. uh, roughest neighborhood. Hello. Um, and so... He really worked hard to achieve, um, you know, the best he could be as an athlete sure. in all sports and um, was awarded many scholarships, many awards, you know, all kinds of things, but always humble. And he knew that it was kind of his ticket out, his ticket to success mm -hmm. uh, was going to be athletics, which it actually was. And uh, Actually, I think you were his ticket to success, <laughs> but okay, go on, go on. Team effort. Okay. Team. I'll, I'll give you team that. Team effort. And, uh, you know, he just, he really loved the challenge um, of every day trying to figure out. And if one person was injured or sick, you know, they had to rethink the whole offense and, you know, <laughs> redo everything. <laughs> so it was constant. You Somebody know? had to go to the bathroom. No, you oh. can't leave the field. You're not going to the bathroom. <laughs> well, there was that too. Oh, okay. Yes. I had to drive a kid home one day because he was throwing up and sick. I'm like, um, time out, guys. He's going home, oh, you know? Oh, my. <laughs> he didn't want to go home. So were you at Charlie's side all the time? Pretty much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's not, that's not usual. So what was that all about? Um, I think I loved um, his vision of what he wanted out of each student, out of each football player. And, you know, the families, there were family dinners after every game. I mean, it was such a wonderful community. And I think that, um, you know, he, he wanted me there. And as much as I had a few other things going on, never mind, you know, grab the little ones and off yeah, we'd go. Yeah. So it was always family. And that's how, that's how he grew up, it was always family, always family. They all came to all the games, you know. I mean, it was always something that... Um, you know, I think back to both high school and college, how the coaches and the families uh, embrace me mm -hmm. as part of the, the football family. And as I said, I still hear from them. <laughs> he played, actually played um, semi-pro after college and um, was just inducted into the Hall of Fame a few oh, years ago. So I got to go back. That's great. And see all the old guys. That is So great. what happened to you guys? You got old. <laughs> yeah, well, and you know what? You're supposed to get old too. And, uh, <laughs> and I look at you and I say, this is not normal. This is not right. But Spackle. it is the way it is. <laughs> Spackle. Yeah. So we, so 30, 29 when he was diagnosed, when did, oh, when, you, you yeah, asked getting that. Back, yeah, yeah. You, know, you asked that question. Because I love every story I hear. Huh. At first they didn't know what it was. Um, sadly, Lou Gehrig's disease does not have a test. You, everything is ruled out. And you would think by now it would, but. Still. All right. And I'm very much involved with All that. Right. And it's still yeah. sad, very I sad and, uh, and heartbreaking. But um, he was told um, he had a year to live, maybe two or three, max. And the doctor said, you know, go home. Don't spend money on anything. And we're like. Okay, we're not gonna, we're not buying that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because he didn't look right like he was dying, so well, to speak. And, and I know the Wiedemeyer mantra: hope over adversity. Oh, you are so right. So it was kind of like when someone tells you no, you want to prove them wrong. And, and so you did. And for you did. until let's see, 1985, when he had really lost, it was hard for him to eat. You know, you end up not being able to All to right. swallow. So. Um, and he did not, he felt going into a wheelchair was giving up. And it was so interesting because dynamics of the family, our youngest, our son, was there with dad and me, you know, walking him, making sure he didn't fall. And because I knew I couldn't pick him up. Right, sure. <laughs> what was he, a linebacker? Mm, yeah. <laughs> yes. Right. Attack. Right. Yeah. Anyway, but it was hard on our daughter, really hard on her because she was, she's so much like her dad. Uh, perfectionist. Mm -hmm. Everything had to be just so. Yeah. And if he got upset with her for not, you know, turning him correctly or being as fast uh -huh. as he wanted or as slow as he wanted, sure. he would get mad at her. And she would say, 
I'm Goodbye. Done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm out of here. And, and our son was like, whatever, Dad, let's go. Yeah. You know, just two amazing uh, personalities. So, you know, you were so famous for, you know, running in the plays for him. He would, I don't know, blink an eye or, or twitch a nose. I'd read or his lips. Read his lips. Mm -hmm. So would he whisper, would he say? No sound. Would, no sound, but he would say like, I don't know what a play is, mm -hmm. uh, 10 and 5. 22. I don't, and he would say that to you, mm -hmm. and then you would run mm -hmm. out there and really. No, the I would, uh, the coaches would come to me. Come to you. Because okay. I couldn't leave him. That's true. Well, I had That's him duct true. taped in a yeah. golf yeah. cart. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't going anywhere. Nope. But um, yeah, and only once did he have to call a timeout, and he fired me. <laughs> did he hire your son? Nobody had to hire me back because there yeah, was nobody else. Yeah, nobody and else. I said, can I double my uh, uh, salary Wait, did you mess here? up a play here? Well, yes. <laughs> yes. He actually told me to call Max. And I'm looking up and down the field. Do you have a new player named Max? Well, it was, he said, just yell Max. I'm like, Max. I'm like, okay, okay. It meant maximum protection. I did not get a playbook because it was in his head. Sure. And his plays you know, offensively were, I don't know, five miles long because he'd switch it. He'd say, okay, here's the play, and then I would set up and then switch and then switch and then switch back. And, and I'd lost, you know, by the time I got over here, I'd forgotten. <laughs> but his quarterbacks were amazing. They were, they, they learned to, you know, read his lips, so they would help me. It is an amazing story. And he lived for what, 30 more years, something like that? 34. Like 30, I mm -hmm. mean, mm -hmm. A, mm -hmm. a medical marvel. Yes. A medical marvel, mm -hmm. and you never left his side. Nope. And then that day came, what was it, 2010? What was 2010. 2010. Yep, 2010, 2010, June 3rd. And he's gone. And, you know, you you did your, I, I hope you took some time off. I really don't remember. You just, you just, no, just I love kept to be on busy. going. Yep. How did you do that? <laughs> Hope over adversity. Well, yes, and you know, um, when we were starting on our journey, the coaches, we didn't realize, were praying for my husband. A whole group of coaches from all over the Bay Area were praying for him. And it was so marvelous because one night when he absolutely stopped breathing and we had to do mouth to mouth to bring him back, um, we had a new nurse that night and she explained what it meant to have faith and true faith in Jesus. and. You know, we're like, well, yeah, we go to church and, you know, this and that. And she said, no, 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 no. You have to give yourself and know there's a plan and purpose for your life. Life-changing. Mm -hmm. Life-changing. So you have kept his legacy going like nothing else I've ever seen. <laughs> I mean, every year still, the Turley Wiedemeyer All-Star All Games. Games. Mm -hmm. I know you still travel worldwide. And, and I don't miss a football game. And, and I know you still go to Los Gatos. <laughs> and, and the away games, and, of course. And so how does the school embrace you? What is your what is your relationship with the school? Oh, it's, it's pretty amazing. Yeah. You know, I mean, when I look at kids who are teaching here now, you know, administration, um, everybody is, is very, very supportive. You know, the Lions Club guys, you know, doing their burgers. And I have a special um, spud burger that I do. And... <laughs> no. <laughs> with, with the bands, you know, potatoes and the yeah. guys. So, um, but you know, it really is, it's joy, you know, and you choose it. You can choose as we've, you know, I minister to a lot of ALS families and it is a choice because any of us could be hit by a bus tomorrow. My husband used to say that. Or a that. car. Or a car. <laughs> or More or likely anything. to hit by a car in Los yes. Gatos. <laughs> Anywhere. Not many buses here. No, no. But, but you know, it, it's, it's, it's be grateful. Be thankful. I was so thankful that he still had his Hawaiian eyes to see. Because if I had to say, okay, now, you know, the guy under center, I don't think he, no, he didn't hike it. No, wait, wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. The defense, you know, ah, no way. It would be time out all day long. <laughs> and what do you think Charlie would say about Lucy Wiedemeyer all these years later? Oh, he'd be laughing. He'd be laughing. I hear, he's in my ear. I say, still say we. I still do. I get that. Yeah. Yeah, I get that. He'd, be, he'd be in my ear. But the, the, the joy of seeing people take on his story and realize that what they're upset about or complain about is small compared to having a disease like he did where he couldn't walk, talk, or breathe. And yet, he could still tease those guys. Oh, I'd have to tell them, <laughs> my grandmother couldn't run faster than you. And this is Charlie talking to them. 
And they're like, what? I said, <laughs> it's not me. You know, and he was always um, finding something to joke about, finding something that was, um, you know, uplifting. And, and it really, um, it was special. Um, you probably remember Jim Farwell yes. when he was diagnosed with cancer. And he, he would come, he'd sit with us at the football practice and um, just said, how do you do this? And then he mentioned that people would walk on the other side of the road so they wouldn't talk to him. So we had, um, he said, okay, well, we'll have a party. So we did. We had a hat party. Everybody had to come wearing some kind of head apparatus. And um, he had a new morphine pump, and he got to show it off. It was such a blessing. And it was so much fun. It, you know what? If you, if you, I've always said if you can't laugh at yourself or smile at yourself or yell at yourself, there's nothing. Yeah. You just got to go along yep. with the program. Because you spread the negativity. Yeah. No, yeah. thank you. Yeah. yeah, I got it. So are there anything else? I'm trying to think, what more could there be to the Charlie Wiedemeyer legacy? Well, I guess 11 grandchildren. <laughs> I mean, oh my goodness, do you know all their names? Of course. And in order? Of course. Let's hear. Okay, well, we'll start with daughter. There's Kaleo, Koa, Kainoa. Okay. All Hawaiian Kili. names. Oh, well, they're much longer. I'm giving you the short version okay. because we'd be here all day. Okay. Yes, yes. Kainoa, um, Kili, Kavika, Keone. Okay. And that's her seven. And then there's Noalani, McKenna, Beautiful Kea, names. And Kai Kai. And the, he's the boy. Oh, my goodness. And are they all local? Are, are both your kids local? Yes. Well, I know. I, so when did you decide after Charlie's death that, okay, I got, I, I got a life to live. I got to go out and get a career? Because you were this fabulous no. realtor. <laughs> 20, how many years? Almost 30, I think. Keep going. Really? Mm -hmm. So somebody mentioned it was 45 years. I said, I guess don't, it is. Yes, because yeah. that's right. You were So doing I never, that. you know, that was constant. You, you did. You're yeah. right. And he loved to hear about it because he's the one. I blame him for that because I was doing financial planning. I had my plant business. I did design work. And he's like, no, you know, he was a realtor part time. So I get his list of things to do. I had a honeydew list. I'm like, finally, he said, how about you get your license? I'm like, <laughs> okay. And you did. <laughs> and then I got a broker's yes. because I was worried that he would get worse. And I couldn't get the broker, so I got it right away. Yeah. And I love what I do. And now you you work, you have a six, oh, my very successful partnership with your son-in-law, mm -hmm. Keith, yep. Keith Andrew. Imagine being hard at work with your mother-in-law for 24 um, uh, years. How does, and how is that? It's awesome. You ever yell at each other? No? Never. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Oh, my goodness. No, he'll go about time. That's my <clears throat> slight dilemma. You know, Hawaiian time. I'm always on Hawaiian time. I get there. Well, and I don't think I've ever seen anybody more active and involved in Los Gatos than Lucy Wiedemeyer. <laughs> so favorite places, favorite hangout places? Oh, gosh, there are so many. Well, name three. Three. Um, Your lovely neighborhood, of course. Oh, always, yes. Um, the kids love Super Duper. You know, how can you not? The burger or the cone or um, both? All of the above. Okay. Oh, yes. <laughs> I the get shake, it. the this, the yeah. that, you know. Yeah. After our all-star game, we were there at 10 o'clock at night with the whole gang. Lester Square, Linda Lester loves hearing this. <laughs> all right. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. And that cute little Hana's place she's got there. Yes. Yeah. Really, really yes. tasty. All really, right. Really we know good. where you're hanging out. Number two. Um, Downtown, where do you like to be? Oh, and gosh. I'm really putting Willow, you on the Willow spot. Street. Willow Street Pizza, yeah. you can't go wrong. Yeah. And of course, Aldo's, the little guy, the little Aldo's. The little, the Aldo's mm -hmm. Cafe, mm -hmm. yes. And oh. Andale's, I mean, Andal you know, all, right. all of the good places. They are all yep. great. And what is next for you? Oh, just continue. Yeah, just continue. Mm -hmm. Making mm -hmm. sure that Charlie's name well, is still out to, there. Yes, and I want to write a book on humor. <sighs> I would love that. Yes. You would be so good at oh, it. Oh, well, and, and the kids. I mean, they're always telling me. I just had a text from one of his former quarterbacks. Coming to town. Got to see you. I'm like, okay. Happy to do that. But um, there are a million funny stories. Um, and, and interesting, I was, um, <laughs> Palm Sunday, Dave Dravecki, you know who that is, the pitcher. Of course. Um, was at, uh, speaking at um, Adventure Church. And uh, so I had texted uh, his wife, just make sure she was coming, because we're old friends. And she said, no, I'm not going to be able to. So right before it started, I'm in the very back with my daughter-in-law and granddaughter. Here he comes. I'm like, what are you doing? Get down there on the stage. <laughs> anyway, big hug, and we chatted for yeah. a minute. 
so then he starts to speak, goes down to the stage and starts to speak, and he says, before I start, I want to tell you about, you know my friend Charlie Wiedemeyer? He said, well, it was my birthday, and I was so excited because I got a present from Charlie Wiedemeyer. It was a left arm. <laughs> he said, so I pinned it on and went yeah. around and whacked everybody. Oh, my goodness. It was the best icebreaker he ever had. But he didn't tell the first part of the story. Which was? Which was. We were seeing him off at the airport. This was a long time ago when you could do that. And uh, my husband said, you know, Dave, I don't use my left arm. I'd be glad to give it to you, but it's too tan for you. So Dave turned around and said, Charlie, I'll take your arm and work on my tan. <laughs> or I'll wear a long sleeve shirt. <laughs> well, no problem. And so two weeks later for his birthday, because they, they were they were like five days apart, we sent him an arm. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, and my so goodness. He's, he's telling, and then he made me stand up. Uh, I'm like, you're in trouble. Yeah. Uh, anyway, but you good are fabulous. humor. And I know you have so, I could sit here and talk to Lucy all day long and, Maybe I will someday, but over a glass of wine, okay? <laughs> or two. Date, or two. Uh, like I said, Lucy Wiedemeyer is indeed a treasure. You are oh, a treasure are in our so town. Sweet. And I'm You're so grateful how you have kept Charlie's legacy alive. And every year it gets renewed mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. more stories come out. Oh, always. It's and, the best. And love and hugs. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Oh, okay. <laughs> Community storytelling right there. There's a gal who's got many stories to tell. You have one? Time to nominate at kcat.org? Okay, if not, I'll see you next time right here at Community Storytelling. I'm Lisa Chrysler. It's been so great being with you. And thank you for watching KCAT TV 15.